Hi everyone, welcome back to Tara's Take. So today we are going to play with making our own faux rice paper slash onion paper. Um, I saw this originally on Natasha's channel, Treasure Books, and of course her video is very edited and very, you know, <laughs> exact. <laughs> this is going to be the more laid back version, I'll be honest, and I'm new to it, but I did make this envelope yes, this, this morning. Um, I had an area that I accidentally tore. I pulled it up before it was dry. I got excited about it and was peeking at it, and so I, fi I patched it a little bit, but... Um, I made the envelope so that you guys could see one of the possibilities because isn't that precious? I mean, so old looking and vintage. And then if you feel it, the paper just feels so cool and it's tough. I mean, it's, you know, it'll tear like a, a piece of paper, but it's, it's very nice. And I want to list some of the things that you can use. You can use napkins. You can use tissue paper. You can use, um, cheesecloth. You can use fabric. I am going to do a separate video um, with the fabric because I feel like that's not really rice paper. Okay. Um, but I want to do a separate video with fabric and we'll make some, you know, envelopes and goodies out of that too. But I was looking here real quick. I know I went in and pulled out my napkins, but I also pulled out some other stuff and I'm looking for the napkin. Just one second here. I set them somewhere. Now, what I have underneath here is, um, I got the idea from Natasha. It's a cereal bag, the lining from the cereal box. It works very nice to lay this on, and it comes off really easy when you use one of these. I also used um, a piece of this cheap, 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 uh, tablecloth I got at Walmart and this is flimsier but it's stuck to it so nicely you can just pick it up carry it to where you're gonna lay it out lay it down and then it peels off of here really easy as well and that's only a dollar um, and then also you can use these that I use all the time these plastic placemats you can also use those so those are like a buck at the dollar store and at Walmart I think they're still a dollar too um, they might be a dollar ninety nine at Walmart now Anyway, um, I'm going to pause just for a second because I cannot, oh, never mind, I found them. They just, they just fell, so, okay, so I have three napkins here, okay, and this napkin right here, this envelope was made out of this here, this napkin, okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So if you want to join in on the fun, you're going to need some PV, uh, PVA glue, just some water-based glue. You can use Elmer's. You know, the cheapest you can find will work just fine. I agree with Natasha. I wouldn't use Mod Podge simply because Mod Podge can reactivate itself when it tends to touch, you know, other stuff. Um, this dries really really good and it's just the water and glue it's not sticky I don't know if the Mod Podge would get sticky I've experienced it does so anyway but you can give it a try if you if that's all you have but all you're gonna need is a container something that you have a lid for you're gonna need some Elmer's glue water if you want to make it brown like this you're gonna need either some coffee dye paint water or you can also use watercolor paint. Um, you could use a small amount of acrylic paint, I'm sure, and to dye your, your glue and make it a brown. Um, if you have any watercolor powders, you know, maybe mica powder would work. I, I don't know, I haven't tried that. But you're gonna wanna take your napkins and separate them like we, like we do. Okay, and mine look to be coming apart. Another thing that um, I agree with Natasha on is your your color of napkin. You want something, if you're wanting it to show up like rice paper, now I haven't done one as an example, but if you're wanting to get that that look where it's you can see through it and it's, it's like real rice paper, you're gonna want to use something with a white 
backdrop because otherwise if it's got solid color you're not going to be able to see through it and I mean it'll look cool if you just want the texture and stuff but as far as like seeing through it and really being able to say that it looks like rice paper you'll probably want to do with, with something white um, she, I haven't tried it yet but she pointed out that if you use the napkin then the inside layers that we usually discard because we're using this you know picture um, those layers come out really cool as a plain type rice paper slash I think it kind of looks a little more like onion paper almost um, yeah so it, it's pretty cool it's just fun and it'll be fun to have it you know in my stash so that I can <clears throat> use it to I don't know make little uh, glassine bags and envelopes and you never know, you know, po fun pocket covers and stuff like that. So, okay. Yay, mine all separated. Cool. Okay. Oh, and another thing she mentioned, and I'm going to link her video below, but um, another thing she had mentioned was that it's better. Now, this one might not come out. I may, because of the color of this one, I'm going to use my clear solution. I have one with no coffee in it here, and... Then I have the one, and this is what it looks like. I have the one with the coffee. I made this yesterday, so let's see how it looks. So it looks great. So um, what your solution mix is going to be is, okay, two parts glue and one part water, okay? And so that was kind of gross. That was peeled off of the edge of that. There's glue. Um, <clears throat> two parts glue and one part water. So I did... In both of mine, I did about two, oh, sorry, I'm try, trying to get this lid back on. It's not wanting to go on straight. Um, I did about two uh, thirds in the jar of my glue and then came back in with my water. And then you'll just shake it. Um, if you're, make sure if you're, uh, I'm saying oh, a lot. I can't think. I'm trying to think of my words. If your lid leaks, just wrap a cloth around it before you shake it up, okay? Mine did not leak until right now when I reopened this <laughs> for some reason. But anyway, okay. So I think on this first one here, I'm going to actually use um, the <clears throat> regular, just plain solution. And I have this here, and mine, you know, it's funny, my napkins are like bigger than my, um, my bag. So I think I'm going to trim a tiny bit off around my edge so that I have some, you know, they're just like right there on the edge of being bigger than uh, the actual cereal bag I'm laying them out on, so... Now, I did not have that problem with my tablecloth. The sections, I'm going to cut this quicker like this. The sections I did ended up um, being bigger than my napkin. So I didn't, I did these yesterday. I did a couple of them yesterday just to practice and then played with one of them that I did because, like I said, I wanted to practice. And then this morning, um, I decided to try out with a piece of fabric, which I already kind of know it's going to work just because I've done fabric with glue before and it worked just fine. And I'm not worried about if this is crooked or not because when we get to the end and you see, we're going to actually be taking our brush and kind of pushing our edges inward because it gives you a lifting point for your napkin when it dries and it also makes it get this like this edge that looks old and torn okay so we're going to be pushing that in a little bit so i'm not worried if my edges are like perfect you know okay so what we're going to do now let me take out this second one because i don't want to be tricking my eyes into seeing and thinking it's on there when it's not Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a marker, and I liked her idea. This was this was Natasha's as well. I am I just watched this video yesterday. It was from here while back last year sometime, but um, 
yeah, so it's fresh in my mind, and I wanted to do it. I wanted to make some, and I wanted to do it with you guys. So I'm marking. I don't know if you can see. Let me pull back a little. I am marking, okay, these four corners, because that's where I need to put my glue solution, okay? Right where the napkin is going. There's little marks here, okay? So I just took and marked and marked, you know, each corner. And that way, when I spread out my glue, I can see where I need to go, okay? And I'm actually, for my brush, in case you guys look and go, whoa, is that a blush brush? Yes, it is. I demoted all of my, pretty much all of my makeup brushes to become paint brushes. And I really like them for a lot of different, you know, projects. This one, I noticed this morning, I did, uh, I did do some spreading of the glue with this earlier and it's so soft it holds so much glue it stays wet longer because one of the things you're going to notice with your napkins is that if your brush begins to dry okay it's going to tear your napkin okay now if there's anybody out there whose brain works like mine which i'm not saying they is but if there is and you're thinking oh i could just probably use a brayer for this and it would go much faster which is what i thought and tried yesterday, guess what happened? It tore my napkin immediately. Like, even though I wasn't really moving hard or anything across the napkin, it was still, it tore my napkin, okay? So, yeah, so you're gonna wet this whole base with your glue solution, your glue and water solution. And then we're gonna take our napkin and I'm just gonna kind of fold it a little bit so that I can control it. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to kind of just sit it down here where it goes. And before I start laying it out, I'm just going to kind of tap that line. You can iron these as well. I kind of agree with Natasha on this one. I am not that person that irons everything. So yeah, I'll just tap them out and I think they're fine. And I really love all the, you know, the lines that it gets. Just kind of lightly tap. Okay. This one, it's kind of funny. This one went down really, really smooth. Okay, now you want to make sure your brush is nice and wet when you start putting down your glue. Because, like I said, that way you don't tear your napkin. And you want to be gentle here. You know how I've told you guys I can be kind of harsh. So, <laughs> and I've decided I'm going to be doing some editing with this video because of all the drying time. So I will be, um, wish me luck, uh, you guys. <laughs> I am going to be doing a second video after these are dried and merging the two videos. So that should be fun. I did it a couple weeks, well, about a week ago or so when I dropped, when my stand thing fell on my desk. So I'm thinking that I might be able to do it again. <laughs> So this is going to be so pretty. Now, one thing I noticed with my napkins, and I, I noticed the difference with Natasha's. My napkins don't have the pictures everywhere, but it's like in halves. Like each side has a half of the picture. And then hers were like the whole napkin had the same picture on it, which was really cool. I don't have any napkins like that. So I'm going to have to be, you know, kind of, Handling or what I do with them might be a little bit different than what she does with hers because I don't have that whole picture to work with um, I don't know yet. We'll see but Should be fun Anyway, I did that little that little envelope um, With just a part of you know One of the Sections so Okay, I think I got it everywhere. Okay, so now we're going to work on the edges, and that's what I was telling you about. And I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush this time. Grab one here. Uh, I'm just grabbing a small angled brush. I haven't tried this, so let's see. I'm going to put a little glue on it because I don't want, I want it to be wet. And you're just going to go along. Can you guys see me okay here? Let me get it into the... We are just going to go along this edge and push it inward, okay? 
And what you're going to do is all the way around, you're just going to lightly tap. And what that does is it gives you a place to pull this up. She showed it on one of her uh, examples. She had one that she did not do this with, and it was really, well, on the video, it didn't work for her. It actually came up pretty easy, but she said that when she was doing it before the video, of course, um, and she tried to pull up the side when it was flush against the plastic, it was really hard for her to get it to, you know, cooperate. So it's just better. And plus it makes it look really cool. I mean, if you think about it, this looks, this gives it that kind of neat old edge, you know? And now you can also cut your napkins down um, beforehand so that you get this edge on all four, four corner, you know, four sides. So like if you know your nap, like with mine, my napkin isn't really gonna cooperate with me. And I know that. I could have done this as like four separate pieces if I wanted to. So keep that in mind. Okay, so this is pretty easy, right? And it's just, I mean, if you're like me, you know, you hate the drying time, but if you have the patience of Job, praise the Lord, <laughs> it won't bother you. <laughs> it's probably best to let them dry. I mean, let's see. I want to say, I started to say a certain amount of time. Now, this side went off of my plastic. See, that's what I was talking about. Um, I was going to say, I think mine were dry within like probably nine or ten hours completely dry. And I had them in a cold room with a fan blowing on them. Um, so it's a room that doesn't have a heat. So. But if you put them outside or if you have a room that, you know, you have good dry airflow and everything. So there's that one. And I'm going to pause for a second and put this where it goes. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Now we're going to do the second one. And again, I'm going to have to trim. Let me see something real quick. I have some of these cut down. I might use these for the napkins just because the cereal bag works awesome for stuff. If you, you know... And it's a super cheap way to have a working uh, mat and not have to. Yeah, the, see this fits. I can I can have like a probably a half inch on the top and the bottom. So I'll go ahead and mark this like I did before. So we're just going to go to the corner and put a little dot, little dot. Just gives you a visual for where you want to put your glue. All right, now, this is a little bit flimsier in the way that, uh, gosh, in opening that, I loosed all that glue around that edge, and it's leaking on me. Okay, I probably just have it too full. It was my second batch I made yesterday, and I only needed a little bit more, and I used it, and I didn't use very much of it, and so... I think it, it just leaked around the edge, you know. These uh, holders here that I have are <laughs> from my face powder, in case you're wondering. So I use uh, this Wet n Wild <laughs> Photo Focus for my, for my light loose powder on my face. And whenever I am done with one, I keep it. I keep a lot. I have quite a few of those because they work amazing. So I'm just going to use the same brush and dip it in this. This has coffee water. Just, you know, like what we use to coffee dye our, uh, let's see how it slips a little bit. So the, when you, just be aware if you do use a tablecloth, it's a little lighter and you need to make sure not pull it up as you're spreading out your glue. But it works just as good as far as a drying place for the napkin because I did them yesterday on this and it was great. A little flimsier when you lift it and just hold it out, you know, let it hang because the, the napkin's on there really securely, actually. But anyway, um, what was I going to say? can't remember. Oh, well. Oh, the coffee solution. I was going to say, um, you're just going to use what you would normally use to, to coffee dye your paper. Now, my coffee, I've noticed a lot of people mention how your coffee goes bad in your water, and it will. Um, but Pam on Paper Outpost had mentioned one time, and it works like a charm. 
if you just add some uh, isopropyl al alcohol to your water solution with your coffee, your instant coffee, that coffee will not go bad. It'll stay good for, I've had mine for months, literally, and it's fine. So no mold, no ickies in there. If you smell real hard, you can smell a little bit of the alcohol, but it doesn't, you know how it is with our coffee, our paper. It doesn't really, it doesn't impact your paper at all. It just, you can smell it when you s smell the liquid, you know. Okay, so again, I'm going to fold this kind of in half, and then I, I'm bringing it down a little bit on the back side so that I can control where it goes. Okay, and then we're just going to lay this out. Pretty, pretty. Okay, and I'm gonna hold this part up so I can, now these napkins are flimsier than the last one I used. You can really tell immediately. I can feel it, they're very thin. Oh, and that was something Natasha pointed out. The thinner and cheaper, like the tissue paper and the napkin, kind of the better because it's more see-through, gets the wrinkle look better, um, and it just, Gives you an overall better effect in the long run. So yeah, because then you can really see your coffee dye and you know, it looks super old and aged and everything. Very cool. So I'm pressing this down just very lightly, but I, I want the wrinkles, but I don't want the bubbles too high because I noticed it catches kind of on the brush when you're doing, when you're brushing it down, okay? So don't want to tear it. I already did that with this one. I want to get this one right because I really like this napkin and I want it to be pretty. So I'm going to make sure my, uh, that my glue solution, see it folds on you if you're not careful. So I'm going to keep this nice and wet with my glue. Yeah, I thought when I was watching her, I was like, oh, I bet the brayer, the brayer would really work good. Mm -mm. Yeah, don't bother. I don't know why I thought it would, because as soon as I started using it, I was like, oh my gosh, it's like tearing immediately. It started ripping. <clears throat> I just tell you that to learn from my mistake. You know, <laughs> I mean, unless you've got a different type of brayer that will really do a good job. Um, mine are pretty good ones. They're not super cheap. They still didn't work, so. <laughs> but you can already see, you know, once it dries, that coffee dyed look, it just looks so much fun. I love it. So what I'm going to do is I am probably going to end up posting this video later on in the week. I have no idea what day it is for you guys because of the fact that I'm going to do a second round, which I'll probably film tomorrow, uh, of the unpeeling of the dried pages. And then, so what I'll probably do is with you guys, I will get these done and just going through and doing it with you so you see how it's done. Okay, and then um, and then tomorrow I will probably film, it's Monday right now, so tomorrow on Tuesday, I will probably film the unveiling and we'll, we'll make a couple things, you know, maybe make a couple of envelopes or, well, we'll definitely make one envelope for sure. I was also thinking, it, trying to think of other things that I could do with it, so. I like uh, Natasha's idea. She's the one who had mentioned making glassine bags out of these. I thought that might be kind of fun too. So we might do one of those. Okay. We'll see. Even just having this in as paper in your journal, um, in the mix is an awesome idea. I mean, it's like, <sighs> It's like she was saying it, and I loved her comparison. She said, can you imagine being somebody who doesn't know how this was made and receiving and, and buying the journal or receiving this journal and having this paper in there and being like, oh, my gosh, what is this made from? <laughs> you know, 
it is so cool the thought about that so yeah I, I was like yeah that is true so let's go ahead and do our sides again we're just can you guys see I'm I gotta be careful with this one because it's a lit like I said it's it's more fragile not fragile um flimsy there we go there we go flimsier so we're just doing the edge here and I think I'm going to pause while I do this because you guys already saw me do it once. You don't have to sit there and watch me all day. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I am going to do um, a piece of my cottage or cheesecloth. Cottage cheesecloth. I always want to call it that. That's funny. It's because my grandma always used it to make a cottage cheese when I was a little girl. So that's why I think of that. Um, anyway, let's pull this in just a little. So now I want to show you guys something. Learn from my mistakes. Yesterday I did some of this burgundy, okay? And this comes in um, a wit, like a, what do you call it? Layers of four, okay? So there's four separate layers here of this, all right? So yesterday I thought, well, if one is good, then four will be better. You know, the whole thing will be better. Okay, no, not. This is what I got. I got, it, it looks, it looks uh, stiff. It would actually make for good backing, and I'll pro you'll probably see me use it for art journaling or for mixed media um, or for my cards or something to use for texture because it's thick, can you hear it, and stiff, okay? I'll even, I'll cut some of it here so that you can. It would also be um, cute on like a journal cover probably as some type of a background. But it's like super thick. Now that the glue's on there, it does not have a good feel. Um, but I watched Natasha do hers and hers came out really cool. So I'm like, all right, I just m use too much. Um, I mean, or maybe it's my cheesecloth. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to try and do it thinner today with you guys. So I'm going to cut this down so that it's just the one width. Okay. One sheet of it. And then we'll see what happens. I'll show you guys in the later in the video what, what happened with it. Figure we'll give it a try. Now this is like a peach color, so I'm gonna use. Um, I'm gonna mark this again, and I'm gonna use my um, the coffee dyed solution. Okay. Dot. Come on, open up. I don't like how uneven that is because later I I don't want to have to trim a bunch of this off. I'd like for it to be as even as possible. So going to trim a little of that corner off. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'm being persnickety about this one. Hers looked like really cool and I'm hoping that I can make this work. Okay. I can't even see my marks because I've got it on top of these dots. That's so funny. Oh, well. It's not going to bother me if it's a little more. <laughs> okay. This is a pretty cool process. I mean, you know, to have these and just, they're very, it was funny, Natasha was really in love with these. And she, she was going on and on and on. And she's like, okay, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> but she's right. She was saying, and it's true. They're very, they make the paper very mysterious. Like, how did they make this? How did this, you know, how did they get this like this? And she even said, this is going to be something I keep for a while. And I'm like, oh, so she's going to hoard it. <laughs> yep. Because she really liked it. So in this one, I'm just going to kind of drag it on here. And then kind of pull it so it's as, you know, as squared off as I can get it. I'm not going to push the sides of this one. Oops, I didn't go quite far enough on that side. See, I couldn't see my dots. That's all right. It goes straight through. I'm going to paint over it and you'll, it won't matter. So. Okay. All right. 
So you just do the same thing again. Make sure your brush is nice and wet so that it'll move. Because that cheesecloth does want to move even more than the napkin. Until it gets kind of plastered down. What I did notice yesterday was if I did the edges first, then it was easier to do the center. So I am going to go and do my edging first. And then I'll do my center and it will stay down for me better. I even poured this at one point because I got bored doing the whole painting it on thing, but I made a little bit of a mess on my jar and I think that's why I had that rim of glue around the top of it. So I'm just going to spread it here. And after this, I'm going to go ahead and the video you see that has these dried will be done tomorrow and merged with this video. I'm only telling you because I never do that, so I'm excited <laughs> to do it on purpose. I never edit like that and do it on purpose. But I figured since I, I merged two videos last week or the week before, whenever that my stand fell, um, I figure, i got some chunks of blue here, that it'll, uh, I can do that again, right? I'm thinking I can. I know I can. I sound like the little engine who could. I know, I'm crazy. A little bit, a little bit. That's all right. All right, guys, so there we go. So there's our cheesecloth done the same way. Um, and hopefully tomorrow this one will feel cooler because it's not so thick. And I will see you guys in a few minutes. <laughs> okay, bye for now. Hey, guys, I'm back. So it's the next day, and here is our fun little pieces that we did yesterday. Um, now, it's kind of weird, but I must have had something in the brush or that I was using or something. Um, there's like these gold flakes all throughout. I must have gotten gold in my brush somehow, <laughs> which for me is like amazing because look at that. It's got like this little sparkle to it. Now, this one doesn't have that and I was using a different brush because it was the clear brush so obviously I had used something with some gold paint or something but yeah it is on the rest of them this one too as you can see there's like gold all throughout and then even on this one here so let's go ahead and get these peeled so this one is the cheesecloth one layer. Remember I told you earlier I had done the three layer and it felt really not fun. Okay, so I still say it's, it's maybe I'm using it's a different cheesecloth or something. Now this one does feel better because you can feel the backing of the glue on the back of it and it's got kind of a, um, a leathery feel. Now I am going to have to peel off the glue from the edges the dried glue um, but yeah it's it does definitely feel better than the other one did you can hear it it kind of sounds you know and it's shiny it was on that cereal box I'm not sure how the backing of the ones that were on uh, the tablecloth the plastic tablecloth will feel so we'll see there's that one and then this one and as you can see as it dried that tablecloth kind of rolled in on itself but it didn't impact this at all and this because those corners were wedged up it's peeling off really easy okay. That's the back of this one, and then that's the front, okay? I guess it did kind of curl it from being on the tablecloth, but because we're going to do stuff with these, um, I don't think it really matters. But this has got kind of that, that crinkly sound. It feels 
kind of leathery and it's it's strong as you can see let's do the next one I advise to use oh shoot I pulled it too hard I tore it you know it's funny this this one I keep messing up with this particular napkin okay now I'm thinking that it's it's tearing like all around it. I'm finding little tears. I'm getting little tears on the edges. So you're gonna have to be really, really careful when you pull it off. If you use this table, this thin tablecloth, I think I will probably just get some more cereal box uh, containers because that one is stronger. It's more firm and. You don't get this rolling effect that this one's doing. So yeah, I will be using cereal or like uh, the, what do you call it, um, placements for mine for now. Okay. I'm going to be cutting these any into these any way to make stuff from them, so it's going to be okay that that one tore, but it just had that little tear on the side. Let me sit down here, guys. Okay. Last one. Let's see. I see this one just peels right off. So, yeah, I think definitely the cereal bags do a better job as a base to glue these down onto. Oops, got a little tear right there. That's my fault. I'm pulling it. And I should be kind of wedging the edges up first. All right. Okay, so there we go, guys. This is our fun little napkin decoupage rice paper. It's kind of fun to make something from it. Now, I am thinking that because I'm wondering something how big because mine are the way they are it's like everything except well the top part will be so if I wanted to do like two um, see the bummer part for mine is because these, these are, I don't know how to explain it. Look, the picture is not a full picture. So these are upside down from each other. If they were all the same way, then I could flip it and fold it like we do a piece of paper upside down and it would be right side up. But because these are both right side up when you face them to you, okay, when you roll them, either, either way, it's going to be upside down on one side or the other. So that's my quandary. So I'm looking here and thinking if I would rather do small envelopes. And I was going to do larger ones, but I'm thinking I might just go ahead and do small envelopes with mine for the simple fact that I have, like on this one, I have... The four pictures same thing um, and they're upside down on this part right side up on this part so it's going to end up being that wherever I fold it if I try to fold it just down into like a pouch or something which is what I was thinking of I'm just going to have to either use plain uh, tissue paper to make these and then do designs on them or something stamping or something like that um, if you watch Natasha's video, like I said, her napkins had the print everywhere. So when she folded it and did stuff with it, it really didn't, it really didn't hinder her. It wasn't upside down, you know. Now this one, because of its design, oh, now this one's better, see, because they're all the same direction, okay? So now I could use this one and take it and go, let's see, yeah, 
I could do this one and make there. See? So now they're both right side up. And what I'm thinking is I might just tear this tear this down the center. And trying to find the line make sure I've got the line here because I was going to go ahead and do a rip on that and just kind of let it be organic you know just wherever it tears and let's see yeah and then I thought I'd make maybe a couple of little pouches So I'm going to pause for a second. I have moved my sewing machine. I think I told you guys I reorganized some stuff. So I moved my sewing machine and to use it, I'm going to have to bring it back over here. And I've still got everything plugged in and ready to go for me, but I'm going to pause. I'm going to go ahead and sew these two like little pouches, okay, for my journal. And then I'm going to probably, you know what, let's go ahead and tear these down too, just really quick. And that way I can decide what I want to do here real fast. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> that tore like big time on that one. Oh, that sucks so bad. I, 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 I'm not too great at doing this tearing thing anyway. I always have a tendency to have it off. Well, at least <laughs> this side is a little better. Let's see. I hope. Let's see if I can do this one. I think I'm going to be able to salvage like one piece of this. Okay. There's that piece. This piece has already got a tear up here. Which, technically, I can probably, I know it's tacky, but I was thinking I could probably just tape it. Hmm. You know what I might do? If I'm going to be tacky, let's be tacky with some, I don't know. I was going to say let's use some, um, what do you call it? Washi tape. That'll probably completely show through. Oh, no bad. And I'm, I know it's crazy, but I'm going to do this into an, a small envelope. So I'm hoping that it can be... Oh, it's totally not sticking to this. Come on. Yeah, it's not wanting to stick to it. That's funny. It was just an idea... Not a great one, but anyway. I am going to use this for collaging or for, um, what do you call it, um, my art journal or something and use it as a backdrop, you know, for, for some more interest on the page. Okay, I'm going to attempt to tear this one. <sighs> wish, me, wish me blessings, you guys, on my tearing skills. I am... Uh, Obviously, not very good. I guess I could just cut it. I really want it to have like the torn edges on both sides that are kind of. Okay, T. Come on, girl. You can do this. So. I think I've got it. I hope. Oh, yay! We did it! Yay! Okay, now we're gonna do. Let's see, where's the, the line? Where's my line at here? 
I was trying to keep these in a square as much as possible. Okay. Yeah, not did it for the most part. I was trying to keep it on the natural line of the napkin. There we go. Another thing I, w I was looking for and I couldn't find was my sewing. Um, my sewing patterns, I put them somewhere. I wanted to try it with sewing patterns because you can do it with those too. Okay, so I don't have an envelope making machine you know, or board, whatever you call them. I don't have one. And so I was yesterday, I was doing this and to get like my, to get a point for me to fold in on my envelopes. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, that was got a little tear. So I'm going to put this on the inside. Okay, so I went ahead and used my middle, my ruler, to give myself that middle point. And I'm just going to make some little envelopes for my journal out of these. My journals. So I thought that was a fun way to use these. Yeah, it just that just really helped me to center mine better because I'm not very good at finding that center point. I don't know about anybody else. I'm just really not. I try, but and then I was just trimming off this little tiny edge. It really doesn't matter because it's gonna be glued down anyway. Okay, so get our glue going here. You can also use double-sided tape if you wanted to on this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just glue that. Oh, come on. Don't fight with me. I haven't used my glue at all today. I have um, actually had another, oh, come on, kind of rough morning, you guys. Physically, I mean. Um, just be praying for me that my blood pressure, I can get it down. It's been up too high and I'm experiencing a lot of dizziness. Uh, my doctor's appointment coming up is coming up in hopefully in February or March. I got to look on my thing, but um, yeah, I just, ugh, this is ridiculous. Oh. So sorry. Hold on one second. I'm going to clean this up. Okay, guys, I'm back. So anyway, yeah, not to worry you guys or anything. I'm just letting you know if I if I seem a little off <laughs> right now, there's a reason. I am just a tiny bit. Not to the you know extent where I'm like, oh, I have to go to the ER or anything like that. I just mm, you know I'm just not feeling good during the day or. Mostly in the morning when I get up, I um, have a hard time getting to sleep. I mean, or getting to uh, wake up in the mornings. I, I don't know, just having a lot of little things happening that let me know, I'm, you know, something ain't right. So... I guess I'm only explaining it because I feel like it's obvious because it's me. I feel like it's obvious, but it's probably not as obvious as I'm thinking it is. You know what I'm saying? I should have done that before. Here, I'm just going to, should I trim it? Yeah. I'm going to just put a little dab of glue and kind of fold that over because it's kind of high and I don't really want it way up there like that. So I'm just going to fold this down. 
so that big point's not right there in everybody's face. And then put this like this. And there we go. My little cute envelope. And you can put a journal card in here. You can put, I don't know, whatever you want, you know. There's the pretty napkin. But it just feels really cool, honestly. It does feel really neat, so. And they're, they're just pretty. It's like I did the one I showed you, um, I think I showed you yesterday. Or not yesterday. It was yesterday for me. It was at the beginning of the video. Anyway, um, I made this one and just put, you know, the flower there. And I'll probably do some decorating on it and put it in my journals, you know. But it's just kind of a cool texture. It's different. It looks different. And then with the napkins, it's really pretty. So, let's do another real quick. No, I'm not going to use that one because that one's got that tear on it. I'd rather. Hmm. Here we go. Alright. So again, I'm just going to get my, my little ruler and go from point to point and find where it's... Stop it where it's centered. So it's a little bit off on this one simply because of the way it's torn. So I just make it a little oops, a little bigger dot than I wanted, but it's okay. I just make that little dot and then just fold it in. That works for me. I don't know what works for you guys. What do you guys do or do you just eyeball it? Um I don't know. I've never saw, saw a reason to... I'm going to try to do this and see what happens. I've never seen a reason to really purchase a envelope maker only a board because I really... I tore it. I really... <laughs> anyway. Um, I don't make them... I, I don't make envelopes a whole lot and so I didn't and I'm starting to do them more now than I did before and so I'm thinking maybe I should get one, you know. But, um, yeah, I just never saw the need to spend the money on that. I'm one of those people who loves to get stuff for my crafting and my art and stuff. But I will, like, give up my, like, I'll give up one thing to get another if it's more fun. And I will give up, um, I'm going to bring this in just a little bit. I will give up my makeup to get something in my crafting or I'll make my mascara last for six months, you know, or for however long. <laughs> just <laughs> to get my stuff that I want for my crafting. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I, um, with that, I'm like, okay, that's not a purchase I need right now. And so I've never bought one. Yeah. I'm starting to go, hmm, maybe I should get one. Maybe I do have a need for them, you know, now that I'm doing this more often. I have like a little weird um, pattern thing on the back of my, uh, what do you call it, my board, um, what's it called? The scoreboard. There we go. I couldn't think of it. And I can't figure out how to use it. I need to watch a video. <laughs> I need to watch a video on how to use the envelope. A measuring tool on the back of my scoreboard because I tried one time and I was like this doesn't make any sense to me at all <laughs> so I just didn't do it so there's another one for my little journal and I am going to pause for a second and I'm going to sew these and make little pouches and I'll show you in just a sec I'll be right back okay guys I'm back I gotta tell you my sewing machine went ballistic with this paper and I've never seen my sewing machine do that it tore this up completely, ripped up one of the envelopes on the side. Um, it was totally getting jammed up. I've never seen it do that with paper before, but I've also never used uh, something glued like this and this thin with my sewing machine. So anyway, I am not going to sew mine. I am going to use my... Um, 
double-sided tape. Let me see here. I have, yeah. I'm going to try this one and see if I like it. If I don't, I'll go ahead and use my little my little gun. I am not going to use the, um, what do you call it, the glue because it will it's showing through a little bit on the back of my other uh, piece that I, envelopes that I did. I can cover it or it's not a big deal. It's right there on the edge. Um, but I'm just going to do what I would usually do with like a vellum, you know, and I am going to, oh, I should just lay that down. Duh. Sorry, haven't used it in a minute. Yeah, that really, I, and I just, I'll be honest, I just don't have physically, I don't have it in me today to fight with my sewing machine. I was like, um, you know what? No, I'm not doing this. So we're going to make our little pouch. And then what I think I'll do is I will probably like, I have a teeny tiny piece of this right here. I think what I'll do is use um, either stamps and do the little, uh, I should have left that on there. I'll do stamps or I'll even draw some stitching around the edges just for fun. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And I also have some like stitch stamps that would be cute to make a little, well this side's a little bit shorter because of the rolling. Let's roll that out and see if I can get it to. Still gonna, still gonna be a little bit short and I'm a little bit crooked. Let's go in slightly. This, okay, there we go. Yeah, I'll cut that off. Yeah, I just, I was like, I am not going to do this right now. There ain't no way. I knew you guys would understand. Sometimes the machine works, and sometimes it doesn't, you know? It just wasn't working this time. I honestly have never had, and now you can see this tape through here just a little bit. Not bad, though. Um, I've honestly never had my sewing machine act like that, to that extent, with paper. So I'm thinking it's the consistency of this paper and with the glue. Now see, now we have this cute little pouch. It's actually a really big pocket in there. Okay. We can decorate it. We can even do like a little policy closure. We can do whatever we want with that. So let me grab here's my other one here. Okay. Now in this one, this is the one the machine ate. So I cut... And I cut it very crooked. I was going to say, I cut the edges. And I make sure that's down good. And then I'll trim it here. Now that I can see it better. Eh. Yeah, I, um... I decided that I didn't want to fight with it anymore. <laughs> so. And I was like, whoa. I'll just have to cut the edges off this one because this one really got ate up on one side. And I decided on the, the cheesecloth that I am going to use that as, um, I'm going to use that one for like the backdrop and for texture on my, something with my mixed media, you know? So yeah, I'll just keep it and it'll be a little bit different take on the mixed media thing or my art journal, you know, whatever. I have fallen in love, well I posted it to you guys, but I have fallen in love with doing those mixed media journal cards um, and I'm contemplating just making some and kits and or sets and putting them in my Etsy shop because I think they're gorgeous and I love making them and I don't know that I'll use up the ones you know all the ones that I end up making so I was like oh I could actually probably sell these you know and and have the joy of making them <laughs> because that was the fun part for me
<laughs> I was like, "Woody, <laughs> so cool." <laughs> so yeah, you might see those pop up in the shop. Okay. So now there we go, another little pouch. And uh, let's see. I'm gonna um, real quick. I'm gonna show you what I was talking about. I'm just gonna go around and do our little lines. Oh, and I didn't tell you guys, my next door neighbors, not the ones that, the kids of the owner, but my neighbors to the east of us, they are moved, they moved, and I was talking to them, um, and they moved because they have three kids, one son who's younger, and then a younger daughter, and then a teenage daughter. And they moved away because of the pedophile that lives next door to them, on to the east of them. The one that I told you guys about, um, who's always working on cars and stuff like that, yeah. So I was glad they ended up getting a home here in Coolidge, but away from the danger of of that just in case you know even if he was mislabeled as a youth or something because that happens I've had it I've had friends that happened too but you never know right so yeah they moved nice people who knows I'm just praying the Lord brings some good quiet people the next time as well these these folks were very hard-working very kind good neighbors you know So yeah, I'm just going to do some little lines and then I'll probably decorate this one and get it ready for something fun in a journal. You know, it's kind of like with anything we make, this is, this could be a background, um, you know, it could be anything you want. The sky's the limit, right? With our stuff, I really feel that way. I look at things, and even when I go to name my videos, I'm like, hmm, because this could be this, and it could be that, and it could be that. And, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, I feel like whatever your imagination can come up with, praise God, you can make, you know, for you can use that technique, like this technique, for something, you know, way more exciting than just this little satchel bag, you know, or an envelope. Who knows? And these would be really awesome um, for art journal pages, seriously. That's totally uneven, but that's because of the rolling of the thing, so it looks kind of cute. Yeah, these could be used in so many ways. I mean, honestly. So, I am thinking... Where's my little cup? I have a... I was thinking maybe a little, not that one, that's too bright. And I cannot, for the life of me, find my stamps of, they're these really pretty ladies on them. I can't find them, I'm so bummed. I was thinking a stamp over here. A real, like a stamp stamp on this one. Or this one's cute. That one looks softer too, might be better. It's just a little faux stamp, but still. thing full of stamp these little faux stamps right here all kinds of goodies you never know what you're gonna find on your desk right guys the other day one of us posted our 
our craft room on our Facebook group, Sagita. Thank you so much for doing that, honey. I was glad you did that. I wanted to see what your craft room looked like. Very nice. And yes, when I saw it, my first thought was what you commented on that uh, I, I said how, you know, how organized and everything. But when I, when I said that, I was thinking until she sits down and starts working again. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're such a mess. I mean, this morning I was looking at my desk and I'm like, oh no, it looks as bad as it did the other day when I cleaned it. You know, uh, thank goodness the shelves are, are still structured. I redid all my shelves and stuff, you guys. So I moved a bunch of stuff. So when I say I don't know where it is, it just means I don't remember where I stuck it now. You know that feeling, right? You're like, I know I put it somewhere. I remember putting it away, but I don't remember where I put it. That's me. I, I am so guilty of that. I'm trying to get this teeny tiny little string there. I'm actually not too bad at getting these cut right, but it takes me a second. I just, I saw this pink butterfly and I thought that would be so cute because of the, the shade of the pink and everything. So it's a Miss Tina butterfly, I'm sure. Can't remember which kit, but I'm thinking it might be Myrtle Cottage or one of those. <clears throat> I just thought he looked really pretty on the front here with a little bling on his back, a little pink bling. We're going to do some. Oh, I even, when I was cleaning the other day, oh, look, I have like a hot pink. Um, I found hot pink bling. I found um, this aqua that I have, turquoise, uh, gold, green, silver. I was like, oh, my goodness, I forgot I bought all these. I think I just got them at the Dollar Tree, but, you know, they work. And they're actually really good for for this kind of thing because these black ones are pretty big, but these are, you know, tinier. Um, now, this light pink one I got, if anybody ever wonders, I don't know if anyone wonders, but I got that one at, oh, it's all tied up again. I got that one at Hobby Lobby, okay, the, the really light pink bling, Diamante. I just call it bling, but it's diamante. I should do the edges of this real quick. What time is it? Okay. I gotta hurry. Now, um, but yeah. So I found all this kind of different stuff that I had put away and haven't used and forgot I even owned. And typical, right? Oops. Typical. So yeah, when I say I can't find something, you're going to laugh at me because you'll know, oh, it's only because she's put it away. <laughs> I was just looking at the little snippet I did yesterday. Um, I did this video. You guys, uh, let's see. Did you see it? I think you did. I think it's for tomorrow. See, it's Tuesday, and I think I posted the snippet video for Wednesday. So this, is, this video is going to be going up on Thursday. So yeah, the snippets I made... Um, after we got off video, I think I, I made this one. I'm going to put this right here. And I think I'm going to put this on here. I think it's really cute. Yeah. And then we'll do a little, uh, you're beautiful. <laughs> you know me. I look at a word. I think of a song. I can't help it. <laughs> or phrase or whatever. Praise the Lord. I don't think I'll even take the top part off. I think I'll just let that be. Kind of dinge it up a little bit. Don't want that bright white. And because we have all the flicks, flickers of gold in the background, we can do a little bit of a little bit of gold here. Okay. So see how handy these little snippets are? And I'm going to be putting that right there, I think. Yep. This will be cute to go inside of a journal. Put it right in the center of that eternal circle of love. And this little guy is going to go about right there. Yeah. 
get some glue here. I'm just using the hot glue because it is much quicker to dry it and get it on there fast. Okay. There we go. So there is our little delightful pack, a uh, little packet. It's a nice big envelope on the inside. Okay. And I used incorporated one of our sweet little snippets we did yesterday. And I could have used, I could probably have used the other one as well. This one we did. Let's see. He might have been even prettier, but I'll put this one on the other one. So yeah, there we go. I hope you guys liked this video. And I, if you did, please hit like and subscribe to my channel so we can spend some more time hanging out and playing with good paper and, and fun mixed media stuff. And you guys have a blessed day and I love you and I will see y'all tomorrow.